So hello everyone, uh, welcome back. So we're going to continue from where we left off last time. So let's um, to start it fresh. I'm going to draw it again. So SAML 2.0 is based on delegated authentication. So it solves one important problem, which is the SSO. SSO stands for single sign-on. So you might have seen this in your own organization where um, if you log on to one application in your company environment, you kind of get access to other applications like your payment applications or your HR benefits applications or your retirement benefits application. Um, so you can get like HR or retirement like 401k retirement. And then like um, if you have like Salesforce, sales information, I mean, there are tons of applications by using one login name password So you can have access to this different application. So SAML 2.0 is allowing you to solve that part problem. And also we saw, saw, I mean, how it's able to solve the, the application being in a different domain, right? So let me um, just bring that picture real quick so that you can understand what I'm talking about. So we have, the users in your enterprise environment. So let's say this is enterprise. And then we have, so we have like a, a cloud, like AWS, for example. So we have tons of different applications, app one, app two. And then, um, so let's put the users here, like before, our, our friendly browser. And then we have the directory services. It's like either like identity management services, right? So in, in the SAML world, this application is, I mean, you got to get into the, some technical jargon here. So this app is called SAML Service Provider. So it's typically called as a service provider because it's providing some service to you. Right? And this IMS and stuff together, it's called Identity Provider, right? Because it's kind of providing some identity. Right, it makes sense. And this is service provider, and this is identity provider. And then, um, make the font smaller here. Okay. So now, when the user tries to log on to this app, like we saw before, the app doesn't know who the user is. And then the user, the app redirects the user to the identity management service here. And then the identity management says, hey, I don't know who you are. And then it prompts you the login name and password. And then uh, the user enters it, right? I mean, it's using sort of the same browser. And once the user enters the username and password, it validates it. And last time I was talking about the identity management returns and a response, like an author response. But typically this is called like a SAML assertion, right? So it has a lot of details. So if the important thing you need to realize it, it tells the app a few things. Once the SAML assertion comes back to the app, it tells that who the user is, And then it tells like what roles or perm permission he has or she has, right? 
and a bunch of other things, right? And then once the app receives that, it's possible for the application to provide services based on the roles and permissions, right? Like we saw in the before, for this to all work, this app should have some kind of a trust, right? So there needs to be a trust established beforehand for all this to work, which is all part of the setting. And you can watch a lot of tutorials on how this is happening, but the concepts is the most important thing you need to remember. And that's what this is um, about to solve you. So the many, uh, also SAML, the other important concept is SAML is based on XML. That's too light here. So let me pick up another color. XML. XML is extended markup language because XML became popular when XML was invented. So it was using all XML. So if you look at this SAM assertions, it's all XML based. It's a complicated kind of a structure, which, um, which again, it's not too complicated once you know what it is, but it's all based on XML, right? Uh, and then um, what are the things I want to talk about here? So there are many different providers, like we talked about the identity management systems. Um, I just want to give you a few examples so you know what that is. Many different identity providers give these examples. For example, Okta is the most commoner who kind of started for a lot of big companies to establish this kind of an architecture. And then IBM, you have like um, a Ping Identity. Uh, you have Oracle. And uh, AWS, something called Identity Services right now. So you have many different third-party vendors kind of help having this directory services, which is all it's doing is it's storing the username, passwords, and all different details about the user, right? So I wanted to um, just take a, another spin to this, right? So let me explain this. Uh, I mean, because the main thing we wanted to talk about is single sign-on. And I want to give you another visualization so that you can see how it all works together. So as is so with uh, SAML. So now we talked about different examples, right? I mean, this can be Okta or Ping can be different providers providing the directory services, right? The directory. So again, this is called the SAML identity provider. I'm kind of repeating myself because you need to remember these keywords because it will come and it may confuse you while looking some online videos. And then we have a lot of users And then um, they'll be using a browser. And let's say one application is stored in AWS. Oops. One application is stored in AWS. Hmm. Another application is stored in Google, for example. So let's call it app one and app two. So as part of the setup process, this application and this application needs to establish trust. That's the most important thing, right? The trust has to be established. And how is that done? Using certificates. As part of the setup process, the app one will exchange some security certificates with the service provider or the identity provider, sorry. And then app one here will also exchange the certificates with this identity provider. So they kind of know who you're talking to. And then when the user one here, logs on 
to the app the app is going to tell you hey i don't know who you are and then it'll redirect uh, i mean it goes to the browser to the identity management identity provider and tell i so the identity provider is going to tell you why don't you give me a username and password and then it's going to validate that and then it will send you the credentials back to the app one right and that if the same user is trying to log on to this application right and it's going to happen the same thing and the app is going to redirect the user to the identity provider but this time the user already has a valid session with the identity provider so the user doesn't have to provide the username and password again right so it's going to just send the credentials or the the saml assertion tokens which we talked about in the last class if you remember we talked about the saml assertion so if you if you don't understand just go through the last video here so it, it sends you the the credentials back to the application too right among other things i mean it's it's normally called a zip cookie i mean but let's for simple simplicity uh, terms let's use some kind of a session details to send back to this app uh, too so the the beauty of the system is the user doesn't have to type in the username and password right so this is how the single sign on problem is solved by using this kind of an architecture right so you log on to one you log in one time and then you're able to use the same kind of a session to log on to different applications without having issues. Of course, they'll have some kind of a timeout and one that's happened, you'll have to enter your login name and password again. So I'm going to stop here and uh, we will uh, kind of um, deep uh, dive deep into the actual flow of what happens. This is kind of a high level picture and I'm going to just walk you through in detail how this flow works. Okay. So even if you don't understand what's happening here, uh, just stay with me and uh, in the next video, I think it'll all start to make sense.